Okay, I wanted to share this with you guys, this image. Um, this is what I do a lot when it comes to landscape photography. I shared macro photography and I want to share landscape photography on compositing, adding other images to your story so it is your story. This part of this tutorial is a little bit more complex and more for the photographer that understands Photoshop and masking a little bit more in detail. But if you take these steps slowly and practice, before you know it, you'll be able to fix any flower petal by doing it the way I'm going to show you. And by looking at this flower, you would never know that really this flower looks like this. You're going to look at what would best suit the flower petal within the composition that you have already. I'm going to go ahead and just make my selection using the marquee tool and then I'm going to go ahead and take this area here and then I'm going to right click and then I'm going to save or add actually a copy via a layer. Click on that and to the right now I have this selection and its own layer. And the reason why I do this is because you can really manipulate this portion of the flower. I'll go ahead and do a command or control T for transform. And I'm going to take this and grab the actual selection and, and bring it to the selection that I'm going to manipulate. I'll go ahead and play with this by lining it up. And then of course you can take the opacity down to see what's behind and make sure it's aligned the way you'd like it to be. What's good about this is that you can take these corners and really play with your flower. And this way you can easily, I feel, change up the look of how you want this flower petal to lay against the flower petal that you're trying to fix. We're going to go through it quickly so this won't be perfect, but I'm just trying to give you an idea of what I do. We'll just do it a lot faster. Once I generally have the idea of where I want this, I'll just push enter to lock it in. And most of the time this is what's going to happen. You're going to have two different colors. And that's okay because now when you want to play with this to match the rest of the flower, or this location, you're only gonna be messing with this layer right here. So what I'm gonna do here, when it comes to flowers, usually it's the light or brightness of the flower that you want to change. So you're looking at up here, image, adjustment, brightness, and contrast is usually what you're gonna mess with, and you usually will mess with hue and saturation. And this one I'll do brightness and contrast. And I'm gonna go ahead and brighten this up a little bit to try to match the outside of the petals that I'm looking at here. And just kind of figure out how I would like this to be. Again, quickly just do this. And if my contrast, maybe bring that down. Then I'll go ahead and push OK. What I like about having this here is that if I still feel that it's not the way I would like it to be, I can play with this and change it up here to manipulate it. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually mask this outside area away from the flower petals. So I'll go ahead and put a mask down here below, put my paintbrush on, it's already on black. And then let me get my brush size and I'll go ahead and just start removing. And you can see that I'm getting the background, but that's not a problem. Now, when it gets into these close areas, I'll give you a quick tip. What I like to do is make a selection. We'll go ahead and use the quick selection tool. And I'm just gonna go in here. I wanna show you quickly. Now I have a selection and then in the mask, I'm going to paint again and I'm not going into the flower petal as you can see 
or you can refine the edge here if you want to really get into the nitty gritty edges you could do your smart radius and then you can paint in here and it will really get into detail as you can see here push ok and what it's done it's refined the edges I'm just showing this you this quickly do a command control D to deselect and then just paint this stuff out and as you can see I haven't taken that much time to get into the nitty-gritty but another thing that is good too is if you want to change up your flower petals this way it doesn't look exactly the same as say this one that we've taken from this other petal that we've copied I would actually even play with this and, and change things up a little bit and then on this actual copy layer you could do a clone stamp and take a section here and or look at the background to see what would be interesting and start clone stamping to bring the background in and play with that that way. Always looking at your background to make sure that it looks even. So it will take some time for you to play. The next thing that I'll be doing is actually blending this middle part in. So what I'll do next is I'll go ahead and get my healing brush. And most of the time I actually use this healing brush because I want to make a selection so I can match this color in here instead of Photoshop doing that for me. I'll go back to the selection and I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to gently go through and heal this line. The next thing that I would do is blend this in. You could see this two different colors. Taking again your clone stamp and then I would bring the opacity down a little bit and then you want to go ahead and just have a soft brush and then just merge this together loosely. Always look at the flowers and to see how it's flowing so it looks natural to the rest of the image. And then once you've got it to a portion that you like, you pretty much have a new petal and nobody would even know that this was fake. If you have any questions or something doesn't make sense, you can always reach me at sullivanjphotography.com and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, let me just share with you guys the basics of nature photography. So I found this flower, let it dry it out, and this is what it was before. Actually, to tell you the truth, let's show you even more of it. Okay, so here's the original that I just brought in from outdoors. And I wanted to tell my story. Just texture, that's what I felt when I saw this. You know, I want you to figure out what you feel when you see the nature. For me, it was a dried up flower that had a lot of texture in life, even after death. So I took it into Photoshop to add some background. I was gonna make, I wanted to make this a square. I always like to add the canvas so you can see the little dots in here and you control or command J. I like to give myself the original. This is just a tip that I do. People say, why do you make a second layer? Because this is the actual image and all of the things that have been done. These two are the images that I composited. See, so if I go to Alt, and option you can see this is a rock composite i do a lot of my backgrounds so i shot this background and i made it and then you can see here that um, without the mask we'll go to uh, remove the mask this is the actual uh, photograph that i've entered you know put into photoshop to blend with this image so this one will go here so you can see this one, how different is, oops, alt and option. So here's this one and I'll do a shift click so I can see. And this is this image um, that I added. 
you can see that um, I've also added some, you know, dodging and burning and stuff like that. Looks good. So when you start blending and adding these uh, backgrounds to, you know, share the feeling that you want, you definitely need a mask. You don't want it. All. I don't personally like to have it all over the actual main subject because then it just seems flat. So that's why over here to the right, you can see that um, if I was to do a shift click, you know, obviously I have all this up here at the top, but it, it, that would be just covering the whole thing. So that's why I like to actually add on some texture or whatever you want in the background and then paint it off. Okay, I wanted to share this with you guys, this image. Um, this is what I do a lot when it comes to landscape photography I, on compositing, adding other images to your story so it is your story. This image right here was something, was on my bucket list. This is in Laguna. My sister lives in Laguna and I've been wanting to go to this beach forever to photograph this um, Rapunzel castle is what I call it. Let's go into Adobe Photoshop. So here's the completed image, my completed image on how I felt and how I wanted this image to look. But of course, when you go to the places in land, you, you go, you, I could probably get this shot if I wait for the perfect scenario. But I don't have time for that. I don't, I'm, and most of us don't. So we can create our own work. Don't feel bad about that. If you do, most, may, hopefully, most of you guys watching this don't. That's why you're here. So let's go to the Alt and Option so I can just show you the beginning image and how to create a story. So this, it, it was sunset. It was a beautiful day. So I, you know, I shot it the way I wanted. I knew I wanted a slow shutter speed. I, set up my composition the way I wanted it. I knew I was going to add uh, clouds or some kind of drama to bring my eyes into my castle. So again, I, what I always do is here's the original down at the bottom. What I did was I leveled it out. See, look at here, look at here. This right here, I had to do this. Now this is this is taking your own image to me and compositing it or changing it up. I didn't like the way it felt like it was leaning. This is my personal taste. It's all about taste. So I leveled it out. And um, the way I did that, so I do this all the time. It just doesn't feel like it's working for me. I'll make a selection of where I want what I want. So sometimes I'll use the variety of rectangular, um, you know, elliptical. Maybe I'll use this, you know, the the actual areas in here where lasso, all these tools. It's just making a selection of where you want to work. So let's just go real quick. I'm going to do something very simple. I'm going to select this area. I'll just do it easy. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to V layer via copy cut it out basically. Okay. So you can see it down here at the bottom. And then if you notice, watch. So there it is, right? There's the, there's what, that's what I'm working with. Since I'm already on the layer, I'll do a control command T for transform. And if you right click on this, you could do so many things. I've done so many things to my images with all this, but what we're going to do is we're just going to actually just tip it so I can get it straight. And I feel that's good. I'll push enter. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll add a mask. And then for me to make it easy, just to kind of blend things in, I take that mess mask and I invert it. Control command I to invert. And now there's the original, right? So what I, what I usually do, it's up to you on how you want to do it. So let's get the brush. It's already on black. We want to put it on white because we want to, oops, we just want to switch it. So we'll just go like this. And I'll start uh, over here at the top. I've got opacity and flow. Well, I know over here, I definitely want this all fixed. So it's level, right? The, the problem child will be right in here. Like if I do this, you could see it's off. So let me do command Z to get rid of it. So I kind of have to, I'm doing it fast. But when I really get in to start compositing in my own image, you could see here, see how the difference is? You could see it. Look, 
See how that's different? So I have to take my time and start blending out and blending in. So I use the X a lot. See this X, how it changes it back and forth, back and forth over here to the right. You know, I'll play and figure it out here. How can I get this to work? So you can see here, this is the um, before and after. Well, you'll see, I, I actually clean things up and move things around and make sure that like right in here, I, I'm, I'm seeing this now, I need to fix that. Unless I fixed it over here, let's see. No, I didn't, ooh, see, look, look at this line. And I'm just realizing that I did not do that. Whew. So glad I had, I'm hanging out with you guys. Normally what I would do is shoot my skies. I'll share with you an image at, um, that we can talk about afterwards that I, an example of what I did do. I'll shoot my skies and then <clears throat> I actually blend them in and tone it. But what I love is the sky replacement now. Whew, that thing rocks. Let's get this off. So here's the sky replacement and what's nice about the sky replacement nowadays in Photoshop is that they give you not only the you could pick the actual uh, background that you want and I'll show you where to get to it but you can also um, go in and play with the mask and you can play with the you know your blending modes if you want there's so much options you can this is what I love about it because what Photoshop has done now is you pick what you want in the background and it has the algorithms to be able to manipulate the rest of the image to make the color feel right. Back in the days, they didn't have this and you could have this nice and warm and this is all very cold looking. It doesn't look real. I do have to say though, as you're compositing, please pay attention to your shadows and where the light is hitting. I'm sure you've heard this many times on this, these shows, but it is really important to make it look real. We're, we're doing compositing to make it real to, for our nature stories. Sky replacement. I love it. One thing I have to say is I'm a, on one girl too. I do on, I photograph, uh, I use on one a lot and they've already had that in on one. So I think Photoshop kind of stole it from on one. Just saying. <laughs> okay. So anyways, you go over here and you can see the skies. You can have blue skies and it pops it in for you. So easy. Oh my gosh, this has made it wonderful. But what I want you to really think about is what are you, this may look cool, but is it really telling your story? I don't think so. Cause it's a blue against the, you know, the, the golden hour is what was happening. So, you know, you should really photograph your own and you could put it in this sky replacement area. This is my sky. It was a, in Joshua Tree National Park. It was crazy, but how cool is that? Right? Let's just play with that real quick. We'll say, okay. Here's the sky. So um, let's go to this layer. I'm gonna do a Command T to transform. And look, I could do whatever I want. Oh my gosh. I mean, I could do it like that. Bam. I mean, it's just so much fun, but it's still compositing, it's still going in. You still really need to, you know, just go in and I, you know, this one didn't, wasn't the feel that I wanted, obviously, but um, it's really a wonderful tool. So I want to recommend you guys compositing your backgrounds or foregrounds or whatever you want. This is the sky replacement, but it's really, it works really well. So let's, I'm not going to save any of this, but I wanted to share with you that I do this all the time. I composite foregrounds. I can, I may change this and put a new tree in there, but I do use it in the layers and I really make sure that it is part of the story that I'm trying to relate to myself and to express to others. Okay. Have a great day and have fun. Cheers.